Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 5 of our custom texture series in Unity. So, in our last video, we got our texture set up to actually show all three layers. However, we have this sort of a weird artifact um, cropping up around the borders of our, some of our shapes, as we see here, where there's this sort of a gap around the edge of the circle, as well as the diagonal uh, line. Um, the border there as well, we're kind of losing transparency and seeing through to the background. So why exactly is this happening? Well we kind of have to look at what our script is doing and what it's basically saying is if the alpha is equal to zero then we're not copying the pixel at all and we're just going to show whatever's behind it and that's that's working the way we want it to. However, if it's anything other than zero right now, we're completely overwriting the pixel. And if A equals one, that is, if, which is to say if the color's alpha value is one, it's completely opaque, then that's fine. That works for us. We can certainly do that. However, what happens when we have an alpha between zero and one, and when it's, when it's visible but it's not completely opaque, it's slightly transparent? What do we do then? Well, that's where what we need to do is we need to blend pixels with the colors behind it. In order to get, kind of get an idea of how that might work, let's look at a few examples of blending. So here we see an image um, with a few different types of blending and a couple of different ways they can happen. So the first one we see here is a normal blend um, at 100% opacity, which I'm calling fill here. And when that happens, like we said, the red circle is all that we see. We don't see anything um, bleeding through of the blue. However, at the 50% fill, suddenly we see kind of the blue comes through and it mixes to make that purple color. Um, a couple other blend options that I'm showing here, we have a screen, which what a screen does is it basically adds the two colors together toward getting going moving toward white. Um, adding isn't exactly the right term for it, but basically you're moving toward the white end of the color spectrum. Um, which is why you get this lighter pink color, really a magenta, that appears when you screen red over blue. And multiply is just the opposite. It, when you multiply two layers, they become darker and they work their way toward black. In this case, they go all the way to black. But as you see in the 50% fill here, um, it actually just gets, a, gets to be a much darker purple or bluish color. But really, you don't have to worry about that right now. Those are going to come in handy when we start coloring our layers, but right now we're really just going to focus on that normal blending mode and seeing how we can get the, um, the color, like I say, in the background to kind of bleed through a little bit when it should. So now back in Unity, to get our uh, script to do this blending for us, let's jump over to Mono Develop. I'll zoom in on what we're working on here. And now, right now, we're making our texture. It's all well and good. And then we get to here where we're actually going through each layer. So as we know, right in here is where the magic is really happening, where we're creating our custom texture. Um, I, is, I indicates each layer that we're on. And then we take that given source pixel, i.e. the pixel from that layer, and we're going to um, add it. Right now, what we're just saying is, if it's greater than 0, add it to our texture. So what we really want to do is we want to say, instead of this being greater than zero, we want to say, if this pixel's alpha is exactly equal to one, if it's completely opaque, then we can just simply replace the current pixel in the texture with that source pixel from the layer that we're adding on. In that case, that we can do that, that is fine. However, like we said, what happens else if source pixel dot a is not equal to one, meaning it's got to be less than 1 because alpha has a bounds from 0 to 1. So it's technically, we're, we can imply that it's less than 1 at this point, but it's still greater than 0. Well, this is where what we want to do is we want to make color array pixel index equal to, we're going to create a function here called normal blend. We're going to pass in the destination color this same color array pixel index because we need that information to see what's in the background as well as the source pixel because that's what's going to go on top. Now we need to obviously create this function because it doesn't exist right now. So down here under make sprite we're going to say 
color. We need to return a color in this because it's got to be populating into this here. So we're going to return a color instead of void. And we'll say normal blend. And the first color is going to be called, I'm going to call this our destination pixel because that's like I say that pixel that's going into the ultimate texture that we're creating. And then color source. And that's the source pixel that we are layering on top. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make a couple of floats. We're going to make a float called source alpha. And that's going to just be equal to exactly what it sounds like, the alpha value of the source. Um, we could just use source.a, but I'm just doing that for reference to know exactly what we're talking about. Second, we're going to say float destination alpha. And you would think this would just be destination alpha, like, you know, exactly the same thing. However, this is this number is actually going to be what the final alpha is going to be. And that's a little bit different because, for example, imagine that you have a um, imagine that you have a solid layer of like we had that solid layer of blue on the bottom. That's technically got an alpha of one. Now we're going to add a 50% red on top of it, but that would suddenly give us 150% alpha, which is more than we can have. So we need to make sure that we're kind of we're normalizing basically our all of our alpha levels so that they will ultimately add up to something that will never go above one. And we're going to do that by saying one minus source alpha, or oops, source alpha, and multiplying that by our destination alpha. So what that does now is say we've got that 100% blue, and then we've got this 50% red. Well, we say one minus the 50% red is, so therefore it's 50% times the 100% blue. So now we've got 50% red, 50% blue, giving us that perfect middle ground between the two colors. And so lastly, now all we have to do is we have to return the ultimate color. And that's going to really be in three parts. And I'll, I'll break this up for a minute just to kind of show what these are. So the color We'll call this the um, the destination layer is going to be equal to our destination multiplied by that destination that new destination alpha, and then our color source layer that we're layering on top is equal to our source times source alpha. And so ultimately what we're going to return is the destination layer with the source layer layered right on top of it. And we can actually, we could, if we wanted to, make this all one single thing by just saying um, return dest times dest alpha plus source times source alpha. And because of um, order of operations, that will this will actually create the ex have the exact same effect. Um, we'll keep it, I'm actually going to keep it as the little bit longer form version for this so that you can kind of see what's happening here, but we're getting, getting the alpha of our um, new layer. We are reducing the alpha of the bottom layer based on that new layer we're adding, kind of making room for it, if you will. Um, we are multiplying the destination by that initial alpha. We are multiplying our source layer by the alpha that it has to make it a little bit, um, make sure it's a little bit dimmer. And then we're going to simply return um, those two layered on top of one another. So we should be able to go back here now and when we hit play, we should see a much nicer and cleaner uh, border between all of these now. So this is all working out with these very, you know, kind of simple shapes. Um, they are combining together. You know, they look good, uh, layered on top of one another. The next thing I want to look at is, you know, to really get a, an added level of customization for this, like I said, 
in the first video, you know, maybe you want to make a custom character avatar. Maybe you want to change the color. Maybe we want this uh, circle to be blue instead of red, or maybe we want the bar to be green instead of yellow. All those things like that. Um, we're going to look at ways of adding in that color information, you know, kind of shifting the color while still retaining the um, integrity of the layer as we add them on. So thanks for watching this episode, and I will see you guys next time.